mountaineering world, Kanchenjunga has come really, really up there out of all the 14, 8,000 meter mountains. Kanchenjunga is uh, the most difficult mountain in this world to climb. Oh. Uh. 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 I was going to die. I feel everybody has a mountain, as I think, you know, in their lives to conquer. Uh, it may not be a real one, but everybody has that one mountain which we all are preparing for. The mountains keep changing but we all keep on taking those journeys. I try to climb the mountains outside to be able to climb the mountains within. I came from a normal middle class family and dreaming to climb such big mountains was something which nobody in my family ever thought of. As Arjun came to the school and came to the middle of the road, he was going to climb up on the top of the road. He was going to climb up on the top of the road. हमने कभी अर्जुन को एज अ डॉक्टर या एज एन इंजीनियर कभी विजुलाइज कर ही नहीं पाए क्योंकि उसने ये मौका कभी हम लोगों को दिया ही नहीं कि हम इस तरह से उसे देखा जाए अर्जुन इज वन ऑफ द क्रेजीएस पीपल यू मीट उसको कुछ करना है तो उसको करना है व्हेन आई सी माय सेल्फ थिंकिंग ऑफ व्हेन वाज द टाइम व्हेन दिस थिंग गोट इन टू माय हेड वन वाज in uh, the Sayadri Hills, I was there for my uh, summer vacations with my sister. Uh, we went to uh, a small uh, evening walk, kind of a hill called uh, Hanuman Tekri. Me and my grandfather went for a walk and uh, I reached the top. And as soon as we reached the top, uh, we turned around. We saw the sunset happening on the top. Just like we were sunset, I saw my grandfather and I asked him, 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 तो इस दुनिया की जो हाई हाईएस्ट पॉइंट होगा उस पॉइंट से कितना खूबसूरत दिखता होगा सो द फर्स्ट टाइम आई रियली ऑनेस्टली गेव एवरेस्ट क्लाइमिंग अ थॉट वाज प्रोबेबली इन 2009 इटसेल्फ आफ्टर माय एडवांस माउंटेनियरिंग कोर्स वेयर आई हैड जस्ट सबमिटेड एक पीक जिसका नाम द्रौपदी का डांडा टू था it's about 18,892 feet high. And on the summit, there was another instructor along with me who told me that, oh, you, maybe you're going to be the youngest person to have ever climbed this mountain. I climbed the peak, and there was an instructor who told me that in Arjun's mind, that you have done so much so much, so you have energy in your mind. You can do it on Everest. At that time, a 16-year-old girl told me that I have to climb on Everest. और किसी कॉर्पोरेट या किसी भी किसी लोगों ने फंडिंग करना उस चीज पे विश्वास रखना हम हाँ भी कर ले तो कोई दूसरे लोग नहीं कर सकते इस चीज को वो अंडरस्टैंडेबल बात थी ऑल द डोज वर गेटिंग क्लोज स्लोली बट एस ऑल डोज वर गेटिंग क्लोज वी स्टार्ट गेटिंग रिस्पांसेस फ्रॉम पीपल सेइंग दैट नो इट हैज नेवर बीन डन बिफोर आई स्टार्टेड रिसीविंग मनी ऑर्डर्स आउट ऑफ नोवेयर लाइक कारपेंटर कमिंग फ्रॉम वेरी हम्बल फैमिली दे गिविंग मी 500 500 500 रुपीस लाइक दिस देवर अबाउट मोर देन 24,000 टोटल पीपल हु आई थिंक केम टुगेदर एंड लाइक गिव मी दिस ऑल ऑफ दिस मनी इन माय हैंड एंड दे वर लाइक यू वांट टू क्लाइम एवरेस्ट इन योर 16 वी लेट यू डू दिस यू नो नथिंग शुड स्टॉप यू फ्रॉ as a parent, I was visualizing how small a person is on the road. So, the child went there and said, what we did was wrong. Then we started doubting that we had to make our decisions. I am tired today. I never felt so bad before. Between camp one and camp two. 
but today it's uh, going not good. It was the first time a 16 year old was going on an 8000 meter expedition. So there was no reference to anyone who had passed it. If he had gone first, it would have So he was the first guy, you know. In this fact itself, it was a very big deal. This is camp two. We were supposed to go to camp three today. But as you can see, the weather is really packed. The winds are really strong. And uh, we're going to see the weather tomorrow and then plan our next movement. I, I still remember this, just this cold air, like, you know, going past my face, feeling this chill down my spine. And, and you know, like, feeling this whole massive mountain stand in front of me. It was just so real, like, I did not know what was coming my way, I did not know what I was going to be hit with, I did not know what to expect, I did not know what to be scared of. As you can see, <clears throat> the oxygen level has really dropped out here and uh, we have been given oxygen so that we can uh, act normally here. एक 16 साल के इंसान की जो बॉडी होती है उसके लंग्स जो होते हैं वो फुल्ली ग्रोन भी नहीं होते अबव 8000 मीटर्स योर लंग इज यूटिलाइजिंग अ थर्ड ऑफ द ऑक्सीजन इट वुड एट सी लेवल द ह्यूमन बॉडी वाज नॉट डिजाइन टू सरवाइव एट दैट एल्टीट्यूड सो एज यू स्टार्ट प्रोग्रेसिंग यू कैन लिटरली सम इट अप बाय सेइंग द बॉडी इज डाइंग स्लोली you know all your processes are shutting down us time because of no funding we could not give him a kind of a satellite phone there was no great uh, internet connection at that point of time kyunki is cheezon ke liye funds the hi nahi hum logon ke paas fir uske sath ek maa ke wo famous appa sherpa karke jo wo wo climb kar rahe the unki apni site thi to us pe updates aate the to hum log usko follow karte the ki pata lagta tha ki team puri kaise ja rahi hai upar तो कैसे कहाँ टीम पहुँचे बट अर्जुन कहाँ है क्या है हम लोगों को वो डिटेल फिर मुझे क्यूरोसिटी गॉट द बेटर ऑफ मी इन द नाइट तो मैंने उस साइट पे लिख दिया था जो मेंटेन कर रहा था उनको कि इफ यू कैन टेल मी वेर अर्जुन इज सॉरी and as you can see what a slope this is aur mora camp to agar dekh sakte ho to aur everest aur upar okay bye as we slowly made it i turned back as some ship i was right behind me he 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 already radioed at 6:18 a.m. india time uh, as he saw me make my way to the final summit portion he radioed down that uh, the first one from our team has made it to the summit to hame to kathmandu se pehli baar phone pe khabar mili ki arjun has climbed successfully to wohi breakthrough tha hamare liye wohi pata laga Arjun Bajpayee the youngest Indian to have scaled Mount Everest 16 saal ki umr mein Arjun Bajpayee sabse yuva Bhartiya hai Arjun Bajpayee has scripted history The clock stopped for me at this point Like I just spent about 15 to 20 minutes on the summit but I remember each and every second The memories of those 15 minutes having stood up there on top of the world will last for a lifetime Most climbers after they summit Mount Everest, they come back down to Camp Four. They spend the night over there, and then next day to Camp Three, and the next day to Camp Two. I told myself that uh, I'm not going to spend another night at Camp Four because I can't afford to lose so many brain cells. <laughs> Some stupid logic, I think, in my head. You've been climbing above 8,000 meters the whole night, and now we've come down and we've not stopped at Camp Four. 
we reach camp three, we don't stop at camp three, we look towards camp two and we were like, oh, that's in our reaches and we, should, we can reach over there. At this moment, we had the load safe phase. This was also the same phase which had given me a big, big, big challenge while going up. Uh, load safe phase is made out of full blue ice and it's really difficult, it's straight and it's a big, big, big ice wall. On my way down, I, I think took the wrong call. I turned around a couple of times and I saw my Sherpa was getting damn tired. And I take the call of sending my Sherpa ahead. And he gave in and he said, okay, if I do whatever, just be careful, take care, I'll see you down at camp too. So here I am now, finally on the world's highest mountain. For the first time, I'm alone. I start walking down, being very careful, being very slow. There was one tight section of the rope and I remember losing my descender. Now this is a device which you use to come down on all the long rattling phases. Before I even realize, I just feel this, my legs go down, like my left leg just slips. I just understand this feeling that the rope is going really fast through my hands. And I fall, 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 slip, slip, slip about a good 15, 20 meters. And then look down, and all I see now is like this big void. And I'm like, I'm going to go to the Mount Everest. 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 I try shouting a bit here and there, but I know there's nobody around. Miles and miles of endless ice and snow and there's nobody around me. I'm losing my grip slowly. Slowly I'm just reaching the end of this rope and suddenly this Sherpa's head pops out of the sunlight on top of this cliff. And he's like, hey, what are you doing here? That was the most beautiful, burnt Sherpa face I'd ever seen in my life. And he came and he was like, what are you doing over there? Have you lost your mind or something? And I'm like, I think I have. Like, and he's like, lock yourself. And he pulled me out of there. Till date, I think I owe my life to this guy. After this, I said, now what am I going to do next is I'm going to climb two 8,000 meter peaks in one season. In 2011, I climbed Mount Lhotse, which is the fourth highest peak in the world. And I was the youngest to summit it. In the very same year, I also climbed Mount Manasulu, which is the eighth highest peak in the world. And I was the youngest to summit that as well. I basically felt like I was no less than Hercules. I was the only guy in this planet to have ever climbed three 8,000 meter peaks. And I had done it all in the first go. And that's how I set my eyes on show. It was uh, somewhere in uh, 2012, we had already reached uh, the base camp of Cho Yu and now we were attempting the summit push of Cho Yu. Uh, somewhere on a summit push, we reached camp three, even in high winds, like the, like the weather report said there were high winds. Uh, everybody else saw that there were high winds. But my mind wasn't seeing high winds because my mind was blinded by the fact that I wanted to rush. Fourth uh, day morning when I woke up, I felt completely out of order. I had fallen completely sick. Uh, my left side of my body was completely paralyzed. Basically, I, my body had gone through in the night a condition called cerebral thrombosis, and in which I had about 11 clots in my head. Cerebral thrombosis is swelling of the brain, which then compromises certain aspects of the brain and certain processes. What your body feels is a byproduct of where the inflammation is. So where the swelling is in the brain would compromise certain things. So he, if, he, if he got a swelling in a certain aspect of the brain that was linked to the retina and the left-hand side, it would do that. If the swelling happened to be on the other side, then different features would be compromised. And there's absolutely no way to predict where that inflammation is going to happen. The only people up there with me were my two Sherpas um, and they're taking the natural calls, trying to save as many lives as they could. I was left to die behind. 
तीन दिन तक ये लोग फंसे रहे और तीन दिन बाद जब मौसम खुला तब इसका पैरलाइज हो गया था ये और फोन किया था उसने फोन किया से हम लोग भी वरीडी थे कि वो तब तक कल लास्ट नाइट तक बोल रहा था कि हम लोग वेट ही कर रहे हैं क्योंकि वेदर इंप्रूव नहीं हो रहा है तो हमें यहीं वेट करना पड़ेगा हम ना नीचे जा सकते हैं ना ऊपर जा सकते हैं सो व्हेन आई वाज इन दिस टेंट एंड द शेरपास हैव मूव्ड डाउन टू सी गुड वेदर आई एम जस्ट वंडरिंग नाउ आई नो दैट स्लोली माय राइट हैंड एंड माय राइट लेग इज गोइंग टू स्टॉप प्रोसेसिंग I know slowly the only thing which is going to be alive in my body is going to be my spinal cord, my heart, and my brain. The breath is getting heavier and heavier slowly. I'm not able to breathe properly. The yellow vision is getting more and more denser. And I look out of my tent at this moment. There's a there's a storm happening outside, even now. One stage, me, usne hamay bhi phone pe keh diya tha ki ab me vapas nahi aa paunga. तो मेरा मन नहीं माना मैंने उसे यही कहा कि हिम्मत नहीं हारना है तुम अपने आप को मूवमेंट करो कुछ ना कुछ चलो क्रॉल करो तो उससे क्या होगा कुछ ब्लड सर्कुलेशन बढ़ेगा धीरे धीरे आई रिमेंबर आस्किंग माय सेल्फ दैट हाउ डू आई वांट टू बी रिमेंबर्ड एंड द वेरी क्लियर आंसर व्हिच केम फ्रॉम विद इन वाज आई वांट टू बी रिमेंबर्ड दैट इवन व्हेन आई वाज डाइंग आई ट्राइड I got out of the tent somehow with the left wrapper in my right hand. I started crawling out. So I crawled, I crawled, I crawled, and soon I just realized that I wasn't even getting anywhere. Like uh, it was just whiteness all around me. I looked up; there was still snowing. It was still snowing. at an altitude above 8000 meters he also has to cope with the lack of oxygen so even moving is difficult you know so you're really in a chicken and egg situation because if you panic you're utilizing more oxygen and you don't have it your heart has to work harder right uh so you really have to be at your wits about that it's at that time that you actually need to remain calmer than you've ever been this cold starts getting into your body it's like somebody is just putting in forks into your spine and it was the most painful thing i've ever gone through in my life and in this whole pain i see my mother's face in front of me and i go like oh, i have to go home i have to go home i have to go home the only hope was that he, ultimately he has to come down to hum log usko yahi motivate karte reh gaye ki matlab tum niche aa jao tum niche aa jao tum आगे चलते जाओ नीचे आ जाओ तो, तो प्रैक्टिकली वो 10-12 घंटे ऐसे थे जिनमें किसी तरह बराबर उसको मोटिवेट करते करते थोड़ा चल पाया नाउ आई रीच दोज आइस क्लिप्स एंड नाउ इट्स जस्ट इम्पॉसिबल फॉर यू मी टू पुश एनी मोर सो आई कैन पुश नाउ आई सी दिस क्लिफ इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी आई कैन सी दिस रोप and i see okay i go like i hold the rope in one hand for quite some time i'm over there i'm pondering over this cliff and i'm like so what should i do what should i do what should i do and then there was just this moment and i said just chuck it go for it i said if it's, this is going to be the end of life let this be i'm not going to freeze to death here the next thing i remember is uh, me uh, just down in the snow I fallen down and I could see some blood come out of me from somewhere I don't know the snow started turning red around me somewhere um and I passed out and I think that's the moment when I just died that was the point where where it could have just shifted for arjun where he could have just decided just to give it give it away like you know it's not possible like he could have he could have just thought that maybe the mountains don't want me maybe this is not what i'm meant to do but he did not because again we come back to the point where where arjun 
is one of the craziest people you'll meet. Usko kuch karna hai, to usko karna hai. I think the next day the Sherpas found me lying at the bottom of an ice wall. Uh, they could not find a pulse, so they pronounced me clinically dead. They tied me in a sleeping bag and started getting me down like a uh, dead body. And I think somewhere down the way, uh, the sleeping bags got me warmed up and I came back. We were going to Kathmandu. Then we went from there and we traveled from the Jeep and then we came to Nepal. So that was a lot of experience. Then we came to the AIMS and we came to the AIMS. बढ़ती रहा हूँ। Then the next memory I have is of me in a hospital inside this CT scan machine and this sound team 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 and it's it's just beeping and I open my eyes. It was a very 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 hard journey, convincing the doctors every day why they should. Why they should not be just amputing stuff at every instance when we reached Kathmandu, where they when we reached Delhi. He never gave up at any point of time. ये एक उसकी it's a very fighting जो spirit है उसकी. He'll do anything for it. The amount of will, the amount of craziness required to survive, वो एक Incredible story, hai, you know. He has never given up. Usne bohat kuch sikha hai in expedition se ki risk to uthana zaruri hai, lekin usko samhal ke kaise uthaye, usko bina jaan leva banaye kaise uthaye. Because mountain pe agar ab risk uthate ho, to ya to is par ya us par. So basically, after the Choyu expedition in 2012. I don't think it could have ever gotten any worse than this. But little did I know that there was a mountain out there called Makalu, which had a totally different set of skills required to climb it. And this was something which I had still not yet mastered. Basically, I realized that it was a big mess and I needed a lot of things to be sorted in my life. I took Choyu 2012 expedition as a, as a learning point in my life. And this is the point where I had established that I must do something more difficult than Choyu in order to ever go back to Choyu. The only mountain which I could call upon or which I could think of at that particular stage was uh, something which is incredibly more difficult than what I have yet attempted. So the only one in my knowledge was Makalu. Arjun first attempted Makalu in 2013. In 2013, he went there first. तभी वो 19 साल का था, तो तभी समिट नहीं हुआ, 2014 में नहीं हुआ, 2015 में नहीं हुआ। Makalu is much more difficult than Everest, in the sense वहाँ पे जो steep sections हैं, वो बहुत लंबे हैं, वो 90 degree walls हैं कहीं कहीं पे, तो आपके skills बहुत अच्छे होने चाहिए। वो आपने एक बार climb किया, तो आपका एक दर्जा ही फिर अलग से हो गया, एक respect का level आपका अलग सा हो जाएगा। Hello everyone, this is Arjun from uh, Hillary Base Camp. We are at an altitude of 4,900 meters. Um, the weather opened up today. We're feeling great. Uh, you can see Makalu back up there with a lot of sublimation clouds. We, uh, If all goes well, we'll be uh, on the summit of this mountain um, in about four weeks from now. Attempting Makalu four times is definitely a crazy thing. The first year when we were there, we could not summit this mountain. We had to turn around about 120 meters short of the summit. We took the wrong left turn right above Camp 4 and uh, we did not know what we were basically doing up there. We ran out of ropes. And you know, you have to realize like the psyche which is going on in the mountaineer's mindset. Like after one year, if you're not able to make it to the summit and for any goddamn reason, you have to turn around and you have to come back you have to go back all the way. So it's a lot of uh, intense and dynamic environment which you're in, every second which you spend out there exposed. So basically now we're back on the mountain for a second attempt in 2014 and we start climbing. And uh, in this whole process of acclimatization, rotations, uh, we unfortunately lost a team member that year. Makalu had planned some completely something different for us. This was the first time I was losing somebody who was with us on the expedition, who we had traveled with, who we knew, who we 
was sharing the tents with that base camp. This incident happening did put me into a straight perspective of life. My life has an expiry date to it. So the clock is ticking and it's not in my hands. So I've got to make the most of the moments which I have. So uh, the third year again, our uh, footsteps were stopped by the tragic earthquake in uh, Nepal. And uh, due to that, it was very uncivil and we had to return. Till right now, we used to see one avalanche would come down from this way, the one, and you could hear the intensity of the sound and the ground shaking, you know. But this time, there were several avalanches, like there were about like a hundred dozen of them <laughs> coming down from all around us and we're just looking around in the valley. Thankfully, at the platform which we were at, and a much more slower, steeper path coming and joining to us. So we were just hopeful that if there's any avalanche from this way, it will slow down till the point it reaches us. When Makalu had done it already three times, what was it that he took it back? It wasn't his ego, it was his son. It was just to do it. It didn't understand why it was not happening from him. It was just to do it. It was just to do it. It was just to do it. Now the fourth year comes by, 2016. Fresh air, fresh start, and uh, we are back on Makadu. To put things in perspective, this is Makalu on the right hand side from the camp we leave. We climb this glacier and then we enter into the snout region, up from there onto the real glacier, and then up onto the ice wall towards Camp 1. Camp 2. Camp 3 on the Makalula, going behind further into Camp 4, Makalu up there. You don't conquer a mountain, a mountain allows you to summit, you know. So everybody who sets foot on a mountain has deep admiration and respect for its strength. To continue climbing mountains, was something which I learned on Makalu. Makalu made me into the mountaineer who I am today. Makalu made me into the person who I am today. Every step makes you more humble, humanizes you. Every single step that you take. And after four, four long years, after three unsuccessful attempts, uh, finally, in the fourth attempt, uh, we made it to the summit and what can I say, that was the most beautiful day. Like, it was like my stairway to heaven. Thank you so much, everybody. Dreams do come true. And this is uh, a live example of this. That's the summit of Makalu. Last five which of us left. So happy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you so much, Dad. Thank you so much, everybody. Talking from the fifth highest point on this earth. If, if somebody um, has ever asked me why now I climb mountains, it's uh, because of this day, the 23rd of May, 2016. I show them the pictures from that day and I tell them, this was the best day of my life, like as an athlete, as, as, a, as a mountaineer, as a mountain lover, as a, as a human. I call it my university phase because otherwise I did not go to university in my life. But uh, when now people sometimes ask me, so which university did you go to? So I tell them Mount Makalu University because I spent four years of my life uh, going to Mount Makalu and learning how to be a mountaineer. The Mount Choyu 2016 expedition was a personal challenge for the young mountaineer. This was Vajpayee's second attempt to climb Choyu after his near-death experience in 2012. Budhwar ko Arjun Vajpayee, you have done India proud. We wonder, is there anything this young boy from Noida cannot do? Uh, 
After climbing Everest at the age of 16, I understood that I got into trouble over there. Recovering out of that uh, came Mount Makalu. Four, four climbs and uh, it taught me patience. After that, there was Mount Choyu, which threw a completely different set of challenges to me. And then, when I thought that I'd seen it all, was waiting a challenge called Mount Kanchenjunga in front of me. Hello guys, uh, so today Pasang and uh, me are heading up today for our first rotation. Uh, we both feel quite confident, uh, as you can see the route behind us looks pretty nice. It's a little windy today here, but uh, we're going to go all the way up the first uh, this ridge and then uh, a little bit towards the left and that's where our camp one is supposed to be. It's a little bit long way as it seems from here, but uh, we'll get to know the actuals only once we are there up. जंगा का जो सबसे मुश्किल पार्ट है वो उसका समिट पोस्ट है वहां पे हवाएं आपको मार सकती है एक भी आपने गलत स्टेप लिया तो वो आपकी जान ले सकती है वहां पे आप रेस्ट नहीं कर सकते आप पानी पीने के लिए रुक नहीं सकते आप खाने के लिए रुक नहीं सकते एंड यू हैव टू डू दिस फॉर 30 टू 35 आवर्स इन दैट फ्रीजिंग कोल्ड जहां पे -60 70 डिग्रीज है जहां पे विंड्स इतनी तेज है कि कभी आपको वो पहाड़ से उठा के in 2017, when we attempted Kanchenjunga in the spring season, the weather played a very, very, very important role in deciding our faith on this peak. The weather is not so great. It's been like this almost every day. It's getting more and more difficult for us as the days are passing by. We are running out of days also. Any day, monsoon can be here also. So that stopwatch is running on the head. We're running out of resources, we're running out of food, we're running out of fuel. Uh, and we're running out of days. It was the end of the season, we had to try and make a summit push. But the weather was still not opening up, there were still high winds, the jet stream was still in the region. Right now, I think five minutes before, we just got to know that the summit party is turned around. So, it's actually quite a relief to hear this because when we saw them early in the morning, they just reached, uh, they barely just reached this ridge, um, which they should have passed probably at like uh, two o'clock in the night or something. But uh, the conditions, I think, weren't that favorable. The weather is good. Uh, Sherpas from up there are saying that the weather is nice but uh, somehow they weren't able to make it to the summit so they've all turned around and uh, we're unfortunate that no summit they haven't been able to reach the summit this year again I do not have quite faith in the weather so I uh, uh, choose to stick back this year From the very beginning the conditions were really unhospitable you know in the valley but uh, I think uh, the mountain lived up to the expectation. Um, it was the fourth year uh, in a row when uh, Kanchenjunga has gone unclimbed by any individual. Considering I felt that maybe I was not enough for this mountain. So what, what is it going to require out of me? Because I know that with this mountain, the probabilities and chances of you climbing it with your own will is very less. And only and only we say it in one day, like only and only if you are the chosen one by the mountain, everything shall go your way, you know. But somewhere inside my heart, I understood that it was time to tell me that I must leave everything behind. Like, I must leave all my fears behind, I must leave all my anxiety behind. If he hasn't been on this road before, and he was saying that I know that I have to stop myself, then we couldn't believe that. But his experience, and successful experience, on a lot, like, he has never given up. Heading back to 
continuing in 2018 it's going to be probably the hardest thing which i have ever done in my life in the field of mountaineering kanchenjunga is regarded as a very 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 difficult peak by mountaineers to climb four in every 10 climbers who have climbed this mountain have never made it back home so i feel um, i hope i i am in the lucky ones uh, who uh, is able to make it back अभी भी जैसे उसका पैसन है वो कहता है मैं चार चौदह की चौदह पीस करूंगा तो हम लोग तो यही कहते हैं कि जब भी इच्छा हो छोड़ सकते हो क्या जरूरत है तुमने मतलब हिंदुस्तान में ऐसे ऐसे लोग हैं जिन्होंने खाली एवरेस्ट करके अपने जीवन निकाल दिया तो हम उसे यही कहते हैं तुमने तो पांच पीक कर ली जरूरी क्या है और आगे बहुत मुश्किल भी है सारी पीक बहुत डिफिकल्ट है and it's good he's got matlab jaise bolte disha mili hai apni zindagi mein bahut kam bachchon ko is umar mein wo cheez milti hai so in that sense at least i'm happy seeing him that he's doing what he likes and he does it with all his dedication and focus mountaining jab tak karega tab tak karega agar uske nahi hota hai to koi aur options nikal aayega i know he's come out to be a great human being which is most important so the mountains have taught him that here man i just can't even explain how happy i am to be here and uh, to be feeling that i'm lucky enough to see the mighty kanchenjunga in front of me the kanchenjunga base camp here at an altitude of about 5500 meters like uh, it's it's one of the most wildest base camps which you ever see across uh, some of the most prominent peaks in the himalayas so now we we are starting to realize that it's just not uh, like the whole weather around the whole nepal is not that bad but in uh, in our local uh, ecosystem the weather was playing a very different role in our climb this is an expected snowfall there are uh, some people going to go head up I don't think that is also a good decision. There are still a lot of storm clouds around. We were just there for a long, long, long time this year. We reached base camp very fast. So, but 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 things are still going slow. Summit winds are going up to almost if you go to see, fifty kilometers per hour. Fifty kilometers. Yeah, thirteenth. Yeah. yeah. No good. No good. Too strong. Too strong. Yeah. I don't think it's easy. I don't think it's possible. Something which I have learned from. Uh, Makalu was something which really came in handy and uh, it still guides me like the four years which I spent on climbing Mount Makalu uh, 2013 2014 2015 2016 these four years taught me to you should know when to wait and you got to wait because there is no way that you can fight this challenge there is no way you have lost this battle you know it and then you have got to try and be a little lucky that is it because even in the best shot even with your best foot forward when the conditions are bad beyond a certain extent you will you will just perish kanchenjunga is the third highest mountain in the world and the highest peak in india and kanchenjunga ke base camp pe pahunchna hi bahut mushkil hai
8000 मीटर के ऊपर आपका ऑक्सीजन लेवल इन दी एयर ड्रॉप्स और इतने से ऑक्सीजन में आप ज्यादा एफर्ट भी नहीं लगा सकते तो आप तीन कदम चल के चार कदम चल के आप फिर रुक दो अपनी सांस भर के मेरे टू कैम वन कंप्लीट वाइड आउट बट इन अ वेट्स नाइस अदरवाइज यू वुड हैव बीन रोस्टेड लाइक अ पोटैटो वी आर नॉट यू ऑफ आई थिंक 6200 मीटर्स ऑल इज गोइंग वेल अ मेनी पीपल ओवर हियर इन दिस कैंप टुनाइट आई गेस is frozen we have poured some hot water mom we have some crazy poha with us yeah lots of nuts and pressed rice not so bad huh good food at 6300 meters not so bad <laughs> i think the weather looks better this year the uh, ice conditions the snow conditions look much better this year so i'm really hoping everything goes well and uh, yeah we were able to make it to the summit this year when we started climbing uh, beyond base camp things got uh, really exciting uh, there were good ice patches uh, between camp 1 and camp 2 Almost reached camp two, and from there, duck camp three on the top of the glacier. A little bit more behind, up into the Kulwar camp four, up, and the mighty Kanchenjunga. As I'm getting into more and more expeditions, I'm getting used to uh, the fact that. Uh, being above 8000 meters is not something new for my body i think gives me an, gives me an extra edge over just being normal and acting normal up there and being able to process my brain right so i think uh, my body is adapting very well and uh, throughout the climb i felt great i was feeling uh, extremely uh, great fun but towards the end when we reached the summit push uh, the last bit from camp 4 to the summit um uh the moment of uh, me just breaking down this moment when i reach uh, because i was just dehydrated and i know this moment i'm very familiar with this moment from a lot of climbs oh oh he sets foot on a mountain realizing and understanding that i am at the beck and call of this mountain and at the beck and call of nature there is just this moment when you are destroyed completely you know <laughs> like every bit of yourself is crying from within every muscle is hurting uh, i think uh, that moment before the summit we did not know how far the summit is even yet but drinking uh some liquid over there drinking dew over there was amazing it's keeping me alive uh, i was <laughs> completely dehydrated <laughs> we had already been climbing from 7:30 in the night and it was now about 5 o'clock in the morning 12 hours of uh, extremely steep climbing and i say extremely steep it was good like all the way up straight straight up no flat grounds nothing just you're always just looking like this up always there's a fine line between understanding what is challenging and what's defining you so he's tinkering on a near death experience to define who he is that's what he's doing i try to climb the mountains outside to be able to climb the mountains within Uh, the mountains outside give me an environment or give me a place to test my limits enough to be able to reach a mental zone to be able to go more inwards
शायद अर्जुन का नाम अर्जुन रख दिया हाँ। इसका भी कुछ बड़ा कारण है बात कर रहे थे। क्योंकि वो हमेशा ही जैसे अर्जुन अपने जो भी उसके ध्येय या जो भी एम उसने सोच लिया तो उसके लिए पागल की तरह लग जाता इट्स अ वेरी स्कैरी थिंग सुनने में बहुत डर लगता है कि आठ हजार मीटर के ऊपर उसके जाने से पहले मुझे हर दिन थोड़ा तो डर लगता है The weather looks good, and in a couple of hours we'll start our journey to the third highest mountain in the world. This is why I climb. Simple. But when I was 16, I saw these views from uh, Everest. Then the coming here from Lhotse. Makalu taught me so much. This is what I live for. This is it. It's time to hustle and go up there. So close, huh? So close. But yes, so far, huh? The weather was perfect. I could not let go of this opportunity. I could not let go of this moment. That finally. Everything's were going well. It's that heart pounding feeling in your ears, that rush in my hands, the the you know the cold in my feet, like the breathlessness in my lungs. It's it just gives you that that moment when you feel like should I go forward or not? Like you're talking from within. It's so loud. everything is so loud from within it's 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 that moment when you realize that that this is what i live for like this is it it's amazing i think it was worth everything i was left to die behind he has never given up everything in the last 2 years every resource that you put into this moment out of the box by up to you up here it was a moment where i felt complete that feeling of just you know knowing that it's not just about dreaming no it's that if you can think about it you can actually go about doing it So basically I'm on this journey of uh, climbing the 14 8000 meter peaks uh, trying to finish the grand slam of uh, mountaineering. Right now I'm in a state where I want to like I want to be at certain places like there's a certain desire like there's a certain fire within me to be on top of all of these 14 8000 meter mountains. I want the world to remember that it does not depend on where you come from or what you have or where you are. or which situation you are in no matter how difficult it gets for you no matter how hard it is no matter how hard life is hitting that if you are still breathing you still have a purpose that if you are still getting up every day and if eyes are still opening for you every single day you have a purpose in this life and you have to keep doing justice to that purpose if you are still breathing every day you're far more lucky that most people who are dead last night who were taken that opportunity of not seeing a sunrise every day so if i am seeing a sunrise today i have to be the most deserving person to see the sunrise live by this and never limit yourself